section 9.3, day 2, uh, we're going to talk about geometric sequences today. So we did arithmetic yesterday. Today we're going to do geometric um, learning targets. I can identify if a sequence is geometric, and I can write, um, and then I can write the recursive and explicit uh, rules or formulas. Um, I can use properties of geometric sequences and their equations to find missing terms. So what is a geometric sequence? Well, if you remember from yesterday, arithmetic is when you add the same number every time, so there was a common difference. Um, here, uh, a, a sequence where the ratio, so consecutive numbers are on the same ratio, which means if you divide them, you get the same quotient every time, so if, if the consecutive numbers themselves. So like here in this first one, here's one, two, three, four, first, second, third, fourth term. Take any term divided by its previous term, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 4 divided by 2, 2, 8 divided by 4, 2. They're all 2, and so it's a, the common ratio is 2, which means you're doubling every time. And if, if we graph this guy, so 1, 1, uh, 2, 2, um, 3, 4, 4, 8. Now what, what does that graph look like? If I connect those, it's not linear. It sure looks exponential. It's curving there. So... Um, geometric sequences are exponential. So when we talk about that we're doing these new sequences, um, arithmetic and geometric sequences, we're actually talking about functions we've dealt with already. So it's really not a new function, it's just a new way of using it. And, um, and these have a common, instead of a common difference, a common ratio. Which you could think of that as the growth factor. So if you remember when we did exponentials, we had this growth factor. That's what you're multiplying by every time you get the next number. Well, that's what this is. So this one is going to have the common ratio as a growth factor. Now, the recursive formula for this is kind of the same thing as um, yesterday. You have to say what the first term is. So first term equals whatever it might be. And then for this one, any term is going to be the previous term. Instead of adding something, we're going to multiply. So you're going to multiply it by r. So to write the recursive formula, the key is to figure out what the common ratio is, what the r is. The fastest way to do that, and I always have to repeat this over and over later on too, but so write this down. The fastest way to do it is divide any term by its previous term, okay? So instead of trying to look at what am I multiplying every time, just go backwards. Pick a term, divide it by its previous term, and see if it's the same every time. So decide if the following are, uh, sequences are geometric. So take all these terms and divide by their previous term. So 6 divided by 2, 3. 18 divided by 6, 3. 54 divided by 18, 3. So these are geometric. So yes, they're geometric. Um, the R, so state the common ratio, it's 3, because I'm multiplying by 3 every time. Again, it's just the quotient. Take any term divided by its previous, and that's your R. And then uh, the cursive formula. So it would be A sub 1 is 2. A sub N equals A sub N minus 1 times 3. Okay, so give, give the rest of these a try. So go through B, C, and D. Pause the video now. Um, try those out. Answer them yes or no. And then what's R? If it is, if it's yes, what's R and what's a recursive formula? If it's no, you can just you know, write down no. You don't have to do it. Okay, so these guys, um, hopefully it wasn't too difficult then. Uh, for B, take 9 divided by 27. That's a third. It reduces to 1 third. 3 divided by 9 third. One divided by three, a third. So yes, the rate common ratio is a third. And then the recursive formula, let's put these up so they're separate here, um, would be that guy. Now these guys here, two divided by one is two, six divided by two is three, 24 divided by six is four. You are dividing, but it's not the same thing every time. So it's not considered geometric. That's something else. And then this guy here, this one actually alternates. You're multiplying by negative one, then by one, then by negative one, then by one. Um, so again, that one is not geometric. It's a different kind of sequence that we won't deal with in this um, course, but if you happen to take Calc 2, you'll deal with that then. Okay, let's flip the paper over now. And we did two methods on um, the explicit formula for arithmetic, and either one kind of works. Um, but here, um, we'll give you two methods, but method 2, Math Excel won't accept. Math Excel doesn't accept this way. Let's spell. Um, so yesterday, like there was two ways they both worked, but the second method was kind of faster. Here, I'm not sure either one's really faster, 
but only one does method still accept, and it's probably the one you'll see more often. So this one, method one, is actually better. Yesterday, the second method was quicker, um, but let's, I'll show you it. It's the same kind of idea, but I, I would avoid it. Um, so first off, uh, we'll just tell you this, this the method or the, uh, the explicit formula is a sub n. It's going to be the first term times, and then the common ratio. And now when you're doing exponentials, this is your like your y-intercept. But here, this is not the y-intercept. This is the first term. This is like when x equals 1. So instead of, we got to like shift the whole graph over. It's being shifted um, 1 uh, to the right. So we're going to have an n minus 1 up here. Now the way to, to think of that, if you, if you want to write as an exponential, then you would need to figure out what is a sub 0. Well, a sub 0 would be a sub um, 1 divided by your common ratio. You're going back one step. Instead of multiplying by r to move forward in the sequence, you have to move back, so you have to divide by r. And then r to the n power. But again, math Excel is not going to take that as an answer. It's looking for this guy right here. So this is probably the one you want to stick with. This makes it more of an exponential function, but this is the one that um, math Excel will accept. And you know, if you have any other testing software, it's going to take this one. So find the explicit formula. So for this guy, <clears throat> the explicit formula is going to be the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So what is that common ratio? Take any term divided by its previous term. So 100 divided by 200 is a half. 50 divided by 100 is a half. 25 divided by 50 is a half. <coughs> so <clears throat> there's our, our explicit formula. If we're doing the other method, we'd say, well, what's the y-intercept then? So if the first term is 200, and you go back a step, well, instead of multiplying by a half, I'm going to divide by a half, which is actually doubling. So it would be 400. And then the common ratio is still a half, and that doesn't change. And now this is to the nth power, so the n, <clears throat> n minus 1. Either way you do it, when you try to find the 10th term, you get the same answer. So if I took this to the ninth power, that means I'm, I'm multiplying by a half one last time. Here I'm multiplying by a half one more time. Well, half of 400 is 200, and that's what gets you to here. So either way, when you type this into the calculator, it doesn't matter which way you do, you're going to get 25 64ths. Well, the calculator is going to tell you 0 0.390625. <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully I've shown you this before. I have no idea if I have. Um, let's say you get that answer. So you type it all in, you got this answer. If you want to go back to a fraction, push math, and then fraction that says convert to a fraction, hit enter, and you get back to 2564. So a lot of times it's just nicer to have a fraction because the fraction's exact, whereas the decimal, you might have rounded. This one wasn't rounded, but it might, some of them might have been. <clears throat> okay, examples find the recursive and explicit formula. So the re recursive formula, again, if I can find that R, I got just about everything I need. So 6 divided by 3, which equals 12 divided by 6, which equals 24 divided by 12, which is 2. So the R is 2 on this one. So A sub n is going to equal the previous term times 2, or the explicit formula, first term, which in this case is 3, times 2 to the n minus 1 power. So Recursive formula is good if you just want the next term. Explicit formula is good if you want to fast forward to like the hundredth term or something. Because remember, the recursive formula kind of stinks because you have to know the term before it to find the one you're looking for. And sometimes the hundredth term, I don't want to find the first 99 to find the hundredth term. Okay, number two, again, R is key. 32 divided by 128. I can do the rest of them. Kind of get the idea, though. It's a fourth, so the common ratio is one-fourth. <clears throat> I'll put this in parentheses. So it would be the previous term, previous term times a fourth. The explicit formula is going to be the first term, which is 128, times one-fourth to the n minus one power. Okay? Then if I wanted you to find the hundredth term, plug 100 in, and you get your answer. Um, now, this example, finding the missing term. Yesterday, we had the arithmetic mean, which was basically the same thing as the average. 
the geometric mean is not the average, okay? Because we're not, um, whenever you're adding the same number every time, this number would fall directly between those two. Here I'm multiplying. So this number is going to be some, sometimes bigger than 7, and then sometimes bigger than that is going to be 343. It's going to be closer, this answer is going to be closer to 7 than it is to 343. Because as you're multiplying, remember that the jumps get bigger. So the jump from 7 to this number is smaller than the jump from this number to 343. Well, what we do is, again, this is called geometric mean. It's called the geometric mean. And all that is is that any term is going to equal the square root of the previous term times the term after it. Okay, so if I want to find this number, I need to take the, the term before it. So this would be 7 times, and the term after it is 343. So the square root of 7 times 343 is 49. It looks like the common ratio here is 7. So 7 times 7 is 49. 49 times 7 is 343. Look, 49 is closer to 7 than it is to 343. So I can't just find the average. I can't find the number between them like you can when it's arithmetic. So there is a difference. Make sure you keep those separated. What term is... 15,625 over 256 in this sequence. Well, the key is find the explicit formula. <clears throat> so ignoring this for a second, let's just use that and find the explicit formula. So the first term is 2 million. The common ratio on this, take any of these terms divided by the previous term. So I got 1 million and 2 million, that's a half. 500,000 and 1 million, that's still a half. Okay, so any term is going to equal all this. Now I want to know what's the which term is this. So I'm going to plug this in for the, the value a sub n. So 15625 over 256 equal 2 million. Okay, now it's an exponent. My variable is in an exponent, which means I'm going to have to use a logarithm because it's an exponential. So you need to use a logarithm at some point to solve this. But the first step... Remember back when we did the bank problems? We had the principal here. We had to divide that over. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to divide this over. I would just do it all in my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to put in 15,625 over 256. And then I'm going to divide by 2 million. It's that number. Okay, so I got that number, whatever it is, equals 1 half to the n minus 1 power. I want to get rid of the one half, so I'm going to take log base one half of that, and then on the other side, log base one half, which is going to cancel that out. It's going to be n minus one is going to equal whatever I get when I do this. Okay, so and maybe some of you figure this out by now. If you have a newer calculator, you actually have a logarithm function. Um, if you didn't know that, oh well, now you know it. I think it'll be helpful. But instead of doing a change of base, you can actually just type it in like this, um, and then that answer it equals that's 15. Now, who, how many of you thought that that was going to come out to be a nice neat whole number i didn't when i typed it in i kind of did because i wrote the question but um so anyway so 15 equals n minus 1 that means n equals 16 it's a 16th term okay so this this is a 16th term in that sequence